Hello. Tonight we're going to finish up Chapter 2. This is the last page of your Chapter 2 Notes Packet, page 8. What we're going to do is solve some equations today, and we're going to solve equations that are primarily fact fractions, rational equations, or equations with fractions with the de um, variable having the... Um, the denominator having the variable in it. So when we have to solve a rational equation, we want to know in the end, what is x equal to? It's going to be equal to one or two numbers, or maybe it's not even going to be equal to anything because we'll just have an extraneous solution. We'll have to see. But remember, when you're solving an equation, in the end, please tell what x is equal to. So there's a five-step method here to solve these equations. The first thing you want to do is look at all of the fractions and say where every fraction is undefined. For example, in this first um, problem, we have an x down here in the denominator, and so what we want to say is this x cannot be equal to 0, because that would make it 1 over 0, which is undefined. So off to the side, we'll just say x cannot be equal to 0. x can be anything else. And what we're going to do is figure out what x actually is. The next thing we're going to do is figure out what the LCD is among all of the fractions. And then, this is a different step than what we're used to. We are going to multiply the entire equation by this LCD. And what that does is it's called clearing the fractions. Just like magic, the denominators will go away. The denominators will all disappear after this step. And that'll be really nice because then we won't have any fractions left that we have to deal with. So that's the step called clearing the fractions, getting rid of those denominators. And then once we get done with step three, we're going to have a really simple equation to solve. And we're going to say what x equals after this fourth step here. x is going to be equal to one or two, two um, answers. And if any root is a value from step one, like in this example, if I figured out in the end after the algebra that x is equal to zero, well, we already said x can't be zero, so we have to reject it because it's an extraneous solution. Sometimes you'll get those in these problems. So let's go through these six examples to see what I mean by these steps. So we already did step one here. Step two says the LCD figure out the LCD, well, we have an L, a denominator of 6 and an x. So if we put those together, the LCD is equal to 6x. So that's step 2. Step 3 says multiply every single fraction by this 6x. So I'm going to put a 6x next to all three terms. And watch what happens next. The 6 on the bottom, just the 6, cancels out with that 6 on the top. And what we're left with is x times x. And you know x times x is x squared. Then I'm going to drop the equal sign down. In the second fraction, that 6 and that 6 cancel out, and we're left with 5x. Then we drop down the minus. And now in this fraction, this x cancels out with this x, and we're left with 1 times 6, which is equal to 6. And just like magic, there's no more denominators. We're on to step four. We're going to solve this resulting equation for x. All we did was multiply the left and the right side by 6x. So we kept this equation in balance. Well, this is a quadratic equation, so you have to set it equal to 0 by subtracting 5x from each side and adding 6 to both sides. So when we subtract 5x, from both sides, we get x squared minus 5x plus 6, whoops, I forgot my x, plus 6, and make it equal to 0. Quadratic equations have to be set equal to 0 before you can solve them. Well, quadratic equations also have to be factored in order to solve them. So the factors of 6 that add up to negative 5 are negative 3 and negative 2. And that's equal to 0. So now what does x equal? x is equal to 3, and x is equal to 2. And since these two values do not match the value we got in step 1, we know that these aren't extraneous solutions, and as long as we haven't made a mistake along the way, these are actually the answers. If we wanted to go back and check them, we can just say, does 3 over 6 equal 5 over 6 minus 1 over 3? 
And if you put that in your calculator, you'll see that it does check. And if you want to check for x equals 2, we can see does 2 over 6 equal 5 over 6 minus 1 over 2. Substitute a 2 in for those x's, and that will check also. So you can go ahead and check those to make sure you're correct, but as long as these numbers don't match this, what we got in step 1, then you should be okay. They shouldn't be extraneous. In question number two, what will make these denominators equal to zero? Well, what will make x minus two equal to zero? Well, if we let x equal two, two minus two would be equal to zero, so we can say that x can't be equal to two, and that's it, because nothing else that we replace x with will make any of these denominators equal to zero. So step two says the LCD. Well, we have an x minus 2 and we have a 3. So we're going to put those two together in our LCD. That's equal to 3 times x minus 2. Now the next thing we're going to do, let's move this a little closer, you can see a little better, is we're going to put this LCD index to every single term to clear those denominators. So in this first fraction, I think I'll put parentheses around this x plus 2 in the top, we're going to multiply this first fraction by 3 times x minus 2. We're going to multiply the second fraction times 3 times x minus 2. And we're going to multiply this fraction over here times 3 times x minus 2. So that's step 3. Now when, when this happens, this x minus 2 cancels out with this whole x minus 2, and we're left with 3 times x plus 2 Distribute the 3, and you get 3x plus 6, with the denominator gone. The next thing that happens is this 3 cancels out with th this 3, and we're left with a minus. Now this is like a negative 4 times x minus 2. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. So be careful of the subtraction. And over here, this x minus 2 cancels out, and we're just left with 5 times 3, which is 15. Well, this is not quadratic. So we don't have to set it equal to 0 in order to solve this. All we do is combine like terms. 3x minus 4x on the same side of the equal sign is negative x. 6 plus 8 is 14 and that's equal to 15. Now we can subtract 14 from each side, and we drop down the negative x equals 1. Now you divide both sides by negative 1, so negative x over negative 1 is positive x, 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. And there is our answer. It's not equal to 2, so it must not be extraneous. And what I would do to check this, I just plug in a negative 1 in for these x's. So does negative 1 plus 2 over negative 1 minus 2? Minus 2 thirds equal 5 over negative 1 minus 2. Couldn't put that in the calculator and make sure that checks. Number 3, what value of y would make this go to 0? Well, y minus 7. If y was equal to 7, it would make this go to 0. So we have to say y can't be equal to 7. Now what is the LCD here? It is y minus 7 times 2. So I'm going to put that LCD next to every single fraction. So we're going to multiply that by 2 times y minus 7. This one gets multiplied by 2 times y minus 7. This one gets multiplied by 2 times y minus 7. And then to clear the denominators, the y minus 7s cancel out. And you're left with 3 times y times 2, which is 6y minus. Those 2s cancel out. And this is a negative 3 times y, which is negative 3y. And a negative 3 times a negative 7 is a positive 21. Now these y minus 7s will cancel, and 21 times 2 is 42. This is not quadratic. There's no y squared in here, so we just combine like terms. 6y minus 3y is 3y, plus 21 equals 42. Subtract 21 from each side, and you get 3y is equal to 21. Divide by 3, and y is equal to 21 over 3, which is 7. 
But look at what we said back in the beginning. Y cannot be equal to 7. So if we algebraically get a number that we said can't happen, then what happens? We call this extraneous. And since there was only one answer, and it turns out to be extraneous, that means there is no solution to this problem that we were given on number three. And that happens every once in a while. Next, number four. What we're going to do here is we have a denominator that can be factored into x plus 6 times x minus 6. Remember to factor any denominators if possible. Now what can't x be equal to? x cannot be equal to what would make this go to 0? A negative 6. What would make this go to 0? A positive 6. So x can't be negative or positive 6 in the end. What is the LCD? Well, the LCD is x plus 6 times x minus 6. And we've already got it here. So x plus 6 times x minus 6 is that LCD. Now let's put x plus 6 times x minus 6 next to all three. And now let's cancel out the denominators. The x plus 6's cancel out, and you're left with this x times x minus 6. x times x is x squared. x times negative 6 is negative 6x. Over here in the second fraction, the whole x plus 6 and x minus 6 cancels out, so you're left with a plus 16. That was left over. And now this x minus 6 and this x minus 6 cancel, and you're left with x plus 6 only. Well, this is quadratic because there's an x squared in it, so we have to set it equal to 0 by subtracting x from each side and subtracting 6 from each side. Negative 6x minus x is negative 7x. And 16 minus 6 is 10, positive, and that's equal to 0. Now we have to factor this because it's quadratic. Factors of 10 that add up to negative 7 are negative 5 and negative 2. So what does x equal? 5. What does x equal? 2, if you set each one equal to 0 and solve for x. And 5 and 2 are not on our list that we have to reject, so they must be, we must have, Hopefully we've done all of our algebra right, and if we have, then those are the two answers. And you can check for sure by just plugging them in. And probably in class I'll show you a quick way to, uh, to check your answers here. On number five, we have a denominator that can be factored. Look at that GCF. Let's pull them out. X times X minus five. Well, what can't X be? X cannot be equal to five or else that would go to 0. And if you look at this, x cannot be equal to 0 because that would make 1 over 0. So we have two bad numbers that we would have to reject. So the LCD on this one is x times x minus 5. Remember, you put them together in multiplication. x times x minus 5. So let's multiply this first one by x times x minus 5. The second one, x times x minus 5. This last one, x times x minus 5. The x minus 5's cancel out, and you're left with an x times x minus 1. So this x distributes, and you're left with x squared minus x. In the second fraction, the x's cancel out, and you're left with, remember this is a negative 1, negative 1 times x is negative x, and negative 1 times negative 5 is a positive 5. And over here, the this whole x and x minus 5 cancel out, so you're only left with a 20. These two negative x's are like terms. They combine into negative 2x. Negative x minus x is negative 2x plus 5 equals 20. Now this is quadratic, so you have to set it equal to 0. So we have x squared minus 2x, 5 minus 20 is negative 15. And then we can factor this. The factors of negative 15 that add up to negative 2 are negative 5 and positive 3. So what does this e equal? This x equals positive 5. This x equals negative 3. 
Well, what did we say way back in the beginning? We said that x is, can't be equal to 5, and right here we have x does equal 5. So we have to reject this. This is extraneous. However, negative 3 was okay, so this is our answer. Hopefully we've done all of our algebra right, or we can plug in negative 3 in for those x's and check ourselves. So we have one answer only, x equals 3. In this last example, x can't be equal to negative 3 or else that would go to 0. x can't be equal to negative 6 or that would go to 0. So what we have here is an LCD that is made up of the x plus 3 times the x plus 6 because they have no common factors. So x plus 3 times x plus 6 is the LCD. And now we're going to put x plus 3 times x plus 6 beside each one. Cancel out the x plus 3's and you're left with x times x plus 6. That goes to x squared plus 6x. Over here the x plus 6's will cancel out and you're left with 8 times x plus 3 that would be 8x plus 24. This is quadratic because you have x squared, so you have to set it equal to 0 by subtracting 8x from each side and subtracting 24 from each side. x squared drops down. 6x minus 8x is negative 2x minus 24. That's equal to 0. The factors of 20, negative 24 that add up to negative 2 are negative 6 and positive 4. So what does x equal here? x equals 6. What does x equal here? x equals negative 4. And then if you go back and look, all we said was x can't be negative 3 or negative 6, but positive 6 and negative 4, so they look like they're okay, so we have two answers to this problem. So that's how you solve rational equations. You go through those five steps, and uh, we'll get lots of practice tomorrow in class. See you then. Have a good night.